Yeah, yeah. You, you're not that bitch or nothing, but yeah. you still yeah. ate that little one, yeah, that little yeah, one yeah, thing, yeah. ate that one thing. Come on in, come on in, come on in. So this is the the most requested live ever, okay? So today we're going to do a good story time. You know what I'm saying? I, I read all y'all comments. I read all y'all questions about my posts that I did about my um my father's ex-wife and how she got a show coming up on BET Plus. So we're going to get into it. We're going to get into it. I'm going to let y'all ask me questions because I'm really, really like, I'm really over the whole situation and I talk about it in bits and pieces. But today we're doing a full story time. So share this. Because I'm going to be dropping some tea. And I got me a drink. So y'all know how I be when I drink. You know what I'm saying? I don't hold no punches. So. Thank you for the badge, baby. Because this is badge worthy. So y'all give me some badges. Let me have a drink. This live is going to be badge worthy. So make sure y'all... Drop them badges. You know what I'm saying? And um, I'm going to answer all y'all questions. I'm going to give a... This is going to be like a three-part story time. It's not going to be just, you know what I'm saying, one part. But we're going to get into it. Okay? We're going to get into it. Because I feel like, you know, there's three sides to every story. You know what I'm saying? And y'all know I pride myself in the truth. I pride myself on keeping it real, straight up with no chaser, you know, so this live is going to be about that, and I am going to have this on my page, so y'all can watch it later if y'all miss anything, but we're going to get into it, so y'all ready to get into it? Give me a thumbs up if y'all ready to get into it while I have me a sip of my drink. What a, what a thumbs up. Where is the thumbs up, baby? Because we about to get into it, okay? The title of the live is Storytime, Who is My Father for Real? So, you know, I'm going to give y'all a little bit of, you know what I'm saying, the background of my life. Um, and really kind of like, you know what I'm saying, really tell y'all who my father is and who his role is on the BMF Stars show. You know, so first I'm going to start off with this okay this is a disclaimer you know what i'm saying because i know some people might be offended and i just want my family to know that i do not like dislike y'all i have no grudges you know what i'm saying i'm not spiteful i'm not vengeful you know so like this is not to discredit anybody or try to make anybody feel bad this is not to create any you know what i'm saying adversity or drama within my family, you know, but I just feel like this is a long way that all my friends been telling me I need to address this. Even my father was like, you know what I'm saying? When they did that last episode and they said his full name on the show, he's like, you talk about it. And I was like, no, nah, I'm not trying to bring that drama to my page. And actually, when I made that TikTok, I was just being like, it was a trend and I was just being funny. Like, y'all know I'm an asshole and I just like to pop shit on social media. Well, apparently... You know what I'm saying? Y'all, uh, y'all, you know, liked it, shared it, commented, and it went it went viral on Instagram. Well, it went viral on TikTok and Instagram. You know what I'm saying? It reached a couple people, and people had a lot of questions. So I was like, dang, I was just making a joke. And, and now, like, it's just something, something real. Like, you know what I'm saying? People feeling some type of way. You know what I'm saying? People feeling like I'm coming at them. And that, what, it, that wasn't even my intention. I literally was just making a TikTok about something that, like, all of my TikToks, you know what I'm saying, have been experiences I've been through or something I'm going through or it's true to life, you know? And I thought that sound was funny. So, let's get into it. So, first and foremost, okay, a lot of people asking me, is Meech your daddy? Meech is not my father. Southwest T, Terry is not my father, okay? Before 
she got with Terry, Tonisa, who I'm talking about, um, and her character is Lala on the BMF uh, show. She was married to my father, Harold. On the show, he's named Boom, um, and his his name is Harold. Not Harold Stinson. Like somebody said in the comments, his name is Harold Mills. That is my daddy. And you could Google Harold Mills. Y'all go to Google. When we get off of here, go to Google Harold Mills BMF, and you'll see my father's picture. Okay? Like, as a matter of fact, I'm going to show y'all who my daddy is so y'all can stop asking is Terry your daddy? Is Meech your daddy? No, Terry nor Meech is not my father, okay? And she was not married to Meech nor Terry. She was married to my father. As it shows in the show, she was married to my father, who plays Boom. So that's who my father is. The character on the show, Boom, that's my father, okay? So I'm going to show y'all a picture so y'all know, you know what I'm saying? Um, let me see. Okay. So I'm going to show y'all a picture. Oop. Okay. Oh. So this is my father. Okay. This is his mugshot of the last time he went to prison. Um... This is my father, okay? And this is him and his his wife, Tonisa. Can y'all see it? That's him and his wife, okay? So, my father character on the show is Boom. Okay, so let's get into it, okay? Um so, first and foremost, when I was growing up, I never knew that my father was an infamous drug dealer. I did not know. I just knew that my father had money. You know, I grew up seeing my father driving Benzes. I grew up seeing my father having Jimmy's. He had a cell phone. You know, when he would give me money for the ice cream truck, when I was little, he would give me $50, not a dollar, not $5. You know, going shopping. Um, when my father took me shopping, I could literally... You know, like, it wasn't really a budget, right? But I will say that it wasn't like I grew up with this kingpin father. And he was financially, um, what's what I'm looking for? He wasn't, like, financially supportive of my upbringing. I'm going to just keep it funky, okay? My father traveled the world. Well, not traveled the world. Traveled the United States. Dated Naomi Campbell. You know, was hanging with the, the big dogs. And did he provide for my mother, for me? Like, you would expect? No, the fuck he didn't, okay? No, he didn't. Though I do have memories of my father doing things for me. Like, the memory I told you about the ice cream truck, that's a memory, when my father gave me $100 to go to the movies, that's a memory, okay? One single memory. I didn't have plush Christmases because of my father. I had plush Christmases because of my mother and my mother's family. And then my mama got a boyfriend who was lit as fuck, and you know what I'm saying? The rest is history, okay? But I grew up with a drug dealer father. I did not know that my father was a drug dealer, you know? Um, when I, I can remember one instance where I was at my father's house and um i went upstairs and there was a table full of money right and um he was like go back downstairs i knew that when i went over to my father's house let me have a drink when i went over to my father's house and y'all remember jukebox my mom be like you can order videos you can do whatever you want to because my mother knew actually my mother didn't even want me to watch new jack city because she was like you know, that's too much like your father's life. I didn't get it. Because, and I haven't I haven't watched New, New Jack City to this day. I didn't understand it because I didn't watch New Jack City. But when I got older and I knew the premises of New Jack City, I understood like, oh, that's what my mama said. You know, New Jack City was too synonymous to my father's life. Actually, when my father went to prison, he went to prison when I was 13. He went to prison when I was from 13 to 20 and then from like 22 to like 25 and then he went to prison when i was 36 and the last time he went to prison it was because they 
they linked him to who he really was in the drug game and he had to do six years and when my father was in prison the only reason i started watching power because we were talking and he was like um watch power you know um i'm like ghost ghost that's who i'm like ghost is ghost is who i was you know what i'm saying so um i kind of understood him more as i got older and you know, like the magnitude of the drug dealing and and just the connections that he was doing, as I as I got I, as I got older, but as a child, I didn't know that my father was a drug dealer. Actually, I didn't know the magnitude of what like my stepmother or what my family was into until BMF got indicted. Right, like I literally, someone sent me the information. It was like, ain't this your, your stepmama? And that's when I found out about BMF. Like I didn't even know nothing about BMF when they were with Jeezy and that whole little like, that whole little rain. I was not privy to the fact that that was my stepmother, that was my stepbrother, and like that was literally my family. I I had no idea, you know. So, um, not until y'all knew. Where y'all seen who it was and what it was, that's when I found out. Like, I'm on some uh, Lisa Ray. Like, I found out through the news, through the blogs, just like y'all, you know? But, um, you know, I really want to kind of tell y'all because I don't feel like the show really gives y'all a proper timeline and a proper, really, introduction of who my father was. Now, this is not to glorify my father like i said you know um it's not like you know i was this daughter of a kingpin and life was set for me because so this is not to glorify his life this is just to explain because i realized that when i put the post out a lot of people really didn't understand what the storyline or what it was so my father was um a drug dealer from Detroit. He was actually one of the people that introduced crack cocaine to Detroit. Now, this is information that he's been to jail for. So, it's not like, you know what I'm saying, he get a RICO charge, I'm on some snitch type shit. That's just, that's why he went to prison. He went to prison for drugs, you know. And he really spent like 16, 17 years in prison. So, you know, you can imagine the closeness of our relationship. My father was in prison most of my fucking life. Most of my son's life. You know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, as I got older, he would tell me things and things that I would find out from the streets or from the news or, to, or from the blogs or, you know, just stuff that I would find out about him so I can kind of tell you who he was when it comes to relations to the BMF series the bmf connection and also um the reason why tonisa is even actually able to do a biopic or to talk on these particular shows you know and it all stems back to um who she was originally married to right so my father harold not harold stinson like i said before not meach not terry but harold mills okay so um, my father was, um, a drug dealer back in the eighties and nineties. And, um, he's been linked to people like white boy Rick, if you're familiar with white boy Rick, you know, um, and, in the show, you know, it shows you that he was influential and actually really like, you know, when it comes to Meech and Terry and their, their, um, the start of their career and so um he was actually the one that taught them how to cook crack you know what i'm saying and so um what happened was my father kind of took them on as like you know like his 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 understudies in the drug game you know what i'm saying and to where he's even like i think meech or terry well him and meech didn't, didn't really have a a good relationship um based on their own whatever they had going on they were cool but I think he gravitated more to Terry as opposed to Meech. And so, um, you know, he he kind of got them started and, and, and just kind of like, I guess, making them be serious. Because I don't think that they were in the game like that before meeting my father. I don't even know. I heard some stories about what they was doing. I'm not going to repeat that information on live because I wasn't there and I don't know them personally. So I'm not going to say like what their 
you know, their hustle or their career or what they were doing prior to meeting my father. But I do know that my father was the one that really kind of got them into the drug world and kind of got them acclimated to what crack was, how to cook it, and just like the um, the profit in what crack can do, like how much money you can make, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, basically, you know, he trusted them, you know what I'm saying? He trusted them with his life, you know, and that he even trusted them with his wife, you know, trusted them with his family. And so... Um, you know, I don't know as far as like, I, I wasn't really like, because I was a kid, so I wasn't privy to the type of relationship that him and Tonisa had when it comes, because someone asked, you know, someone said in the comments, the abuser and how do you feel about your father being portrayed on the show? I didn't watch the show, um, because it's, it really don't make sense for me to watch this show because it's like, it's not, it's not my life. You know what I'm saying? It's not my life per se. And, um, you know, so I don't, I don't watch TV anyway. I don't watch shows like that. And so I just didn't have an interest to even tune in. My son watched it because of course, you know, his grandfather character was portrayed. And so he wanted to see, and I would hear about certain tits and bits and stuff about that. But, um, you know, I do know that, you know, him and her didn't have the most loving relationship. Okay. I'll put it like that. Um, you know, and so, and this comes from him and it comes from obviously what she said on track Queens and all that kind of shit. But, um, you know, I do know that when he went to prison, he asked Terry to watch over his family and to make sure that his wife was good, his children, his child was good, um, that he had with her, not me. Just wasn't nobody checking for me and making sure I was good. You know what I'm saying? My mama had me. My grandma, my granddaddy, my aunties, my uncles, my cousins had me. Okay? But he basically entrusted Terry to um, basically watch over his wife and make sure things work smoothly. And, you know, they wound up getting into a relationship. You know, and she wound up, because at, at this point she was married to my father, um, she wound up having... Um, a relations with Terry, you know, and, um, I guess it, it wasn't, it wasn't a platonic, obviously relationship, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, basically, you know, they got together and the rest is history. Like she was the one that actually came up with the name black mafia family, which my brother actually, because my father has three children, but really two children that really like have a relationship because we don't know where my sister at but my brother is the one that actually owns the trademark to bmf um he has an apparel line with bmf so that's how much you know their connection is with bmf you know what i'm saying and so um fast forward you know, when things started to, when my father went to prison the last time, they found out who he really was to BMF and, and you know, and who he was to Terry and Meech and, and his connection in the streets. And so he wound up getting more time. In the midst of him getting more time, now we're in the age of, you know, social media. We're in the age of reality shows. And even before my father went to prison the last time, Tony still wanted to do a reality show. Um, I don't know if y'all remember um, but the first days of BMF or BMF wise, some shit like that. And it didn't, it didn't go through. Well, this time, you know, my, my brother, um, got with 50 cent and it actually became a thing. You know what I'm saying? And 50 was interested in, I guess with the success of power, you know, he knew that this was something that he could pull off and a lot of people would want to, um, watch it you know what i'm saying and it would become a thing and so that's when you know the show started to come out that's when um you know she did the trap queens and if you watch trap queens and if you watch bmf or if you watch anything that she does you know that you know realistically he was very influential in the creation of things and had it not been for him you know a lot of this shit wouldn't even have happened you know, just to be honest, the, I, I'm not sure BMF would have would have been in creation. I'm not sure if the, even the 50 Cent show or any of this would even have been a factor 
if it wasn't for his role in the lives of Terry, Meech, and Tonisa. And so when I did the, the TikTok, you know, the TikTok was just about, you know, there it was a little trend and it was basically like, you know, um, she's utilizing the trauma that she went through with my father and, you know, her story, which really, you know, started when she got with my father and now she's using it to you know do these shows and you know that's what people do you know what i'm saying when you have a story that people feel like is notable people gonna ride that wave and that's what she's doing she's riding that wave and she's getting you know her her notoriety because bmf was a notable um drug cartel to be honest, you know what I'm saying? And so now she's doing the show. Um, someone asked me in the comments, how do I feel about my father being portrayed in the show? Okay, so the only thing that I do have a problem with, you know, the abuse and stuff, I don't know shit about that. You know, my father ain't even with me. You know, I've heard stories about him and my mom and what he's done to my mom. Um, she has basically been very vocal about him being abusive to her. I know that he's emotionally unavailable to me. You know, I know that he hasn't been, you know, that that loving father to me. He hasn't hit me, but, you know, emotionally and verbally, he has. You know, like, for real, for real, like, I don't have a a loving, I've tried to have a relationship with him, but it just ain't happening. Like, literally. Like, if I call my father today and tell him I need help for something, my father ain't going to do it. Flat out. I called my father the other day and asked him, could he help me? And he told me, are you kidding? Like, you know what I'm saying? So, um, someone asked in the comments, like, is there a reason why my father didn't, like, provide for me? I mean, realistically, I feel like he's too busy doing for himself. You know, I feel like he's too busy, you know, buying shoes and watches and, and cars and, you know, dating chicks and buying liquor and, and, and out here in these streets to where he don't feel that that's important, which is sad. You know what I'm saying? Because technically he only has one daughter that he has a relationship with, you know, but he doesn't really do. I mean, when he was with my my stepmom, he did for my brother, but that's because she was making sure that he did for her children, not just him, but her other two children that she had prior to him, you know? So she made that happen. Um, with me, my mom kind of just like, nigga, you, you don't want to step up. I'm not going to make you, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to make it do what it do, you know, as the same thing I did when my son's father was not, you know, financially, um, supportive when it came to raising my son. Let me have a drink. But, you know, um, I've I've done a lot of shadow work to overcome that relationship. And, and it's not that I feel, like, jilted. At this point, I don't really give a fuck because I was raised, you know, very well. I did not want for nothing as a child. I did not go hungry. I did not miss any designers. I did not miss any school dances, any school events. I traveled. And I had a very good childhood, despite the fact that, you know what I'm saying, my father, um, even though he was a rich drug dealer, he did not provide like like you would expect a drug dealer to do or a, a father to do at that point. You know what I'm saying? Um, now, when it comes to them calling him a snitch, because if, if y'all watch the episode, right, and someone asks, you know, who is your dad, if you watch the BMF um, show, you know, um, then the character, boom, Lala's husband, that's my father, okay? And his his name is Harold. He was married to Tonisa. And if y'all see her bio pickle, if y'all watch Trap Queen, see all over that bitch, okay? But um, the fact that they call him a snitch, okay? That part really upset me, but it didn't upset me for the reasons that y'all thought. The reason it upset me... Because I've asked him to have conversations and address this, like, numerous of times. You know what I'm saying? And he wants to deal with a turn. Like, he want to do some other shit. And I'm like, listen, they speaking bad on your name. Somebody speak bad on my name. 
I'm going to tell it. And I'm, and because I have a background in public relations, because even there was an interview that Tonisa and Terry did in Detroit. I set that interview up. There was an interview that her son did on Bossa. I set that interview up because I have connections in the music and entertainment industry because I was a publicist for two decades. Like, let's just keep it funky. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to the industry, I'm savvy, I'm lit, and I'm known in that bitch. You know what I'm saying? So, um... I was only upset that he didn't address it properly. Because if somebody called me a snitch and I ain't snitch, my nigga, I'm going everywhere and talking and I'm telling what really happened. And I'm not letting nobody talk crazy on my motherfucking name. You know, so um, I have not, like, me and him did do a live one. I mean, a, um, a YouTube one time addressing it when it first happened when somebody named uh, uh, Dexter Sosa or some shit when he talked about it I did a a, a, um, a YouTube with him but I took it down cause I'm like I'm not about to have my YouTube show shit like my YouTube is for me it's not for you and this ain't the type of traction and entertainment and the type of things that I want on my channel you do it on your own you know and actually he had told me before when they did when they had the last episode he was like you should address it or do it on your platform you got a bunch of followers and I was like I'm not bringing that low vibrational ass shit to my um to my page but it just so happened that i was being creative and did the the um the tiktok and then y'all was in the comments asking these questions like who your father who your father and i was like instead of me going one by one and just leave y'all to just in 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 suspense i'm just gonna do this live and address it and get it over with and we're gonna talk about it we're gonna do a story time and i'm gonna do three parts like i said because i'm gonna really give y'all the real of the real someone asked that my parents have a relationship my mother and father to be honest my mother and father been together since they was 14 they got together when they were in middle school okay they did not break up until my mama got pregnant and then my mama told my daddy she was pregnant he said by who and then he seen me and y'all see my father right y'all see how he look i look just like his motherfucking ass he asked her is that my child like nigga is you dumb you know what i'm saying so and i know that you know what i'm saying he was abusive to my mama and my mama grew up in a very religious household and it wouldn't have worked anyway. Like, and I'm so glad that my mama did not stay with my daddy. You know what I'm saying? Because I couldn't have taken seeing my father abuse my mama. And to be honest, I don't even know if I would have been able to deal with my father being a drug dealer and growing up in that life. You know what I'm saying? Because he'd have been shot, stabbed, all kinds of shit. You know, even my father was i told my father the other day that when one time when my mama had him watch me this nigga dropped me off at the wrong school because he didn't know what school i went to and told me to go to school with my cousin and my cousin was a year younger than me so i mean i'm in class with my cousin who's a year younger than me in a whole different school and the principal just so happened to be my mama client and they called my mama like your daughter in our school so imagine if my parents would have been together you know what i'm saying like, how would that have worked? Ain't no telling what type of mental instabilities I would have if they were together. You know, because they like oil and fucking water, okay? Like, that's like putting gasoline on a motherfucking fire, you know? I wouldn't have wanted that for my life. And I'm very happy the way that it played out, to be honest. You know what I'm saying? So, let me have another drink. So, yeah, so my parents were together, you know. They went to prom together, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't like my, and y'all got to think, this is back in the 70s. It's not no, it's not no, my mama met him, he was a drug dealer, and she was a jump off. No. Like, I have pictures of them being embraced and in love. Like, I know for a fact that at one point my my parents were in love. But I just think that the way that my father was raised, he wasn't raised in a loving household. You know, he wasn't raised with compassion. He wasn't raised with empathy. And so he don't know where to get it from. He can't pull it out his ass, to be honest. And that's real shit. And like I said, this is not to try to make nobody feel bad or try to, you know what I'm saying? I'm just being truthful. And a lot of people I know, they don't really, I realize that in black families, they don't know how to deal with the truth. They want you to just, oh, if I did something, you just get over it and don't talk about it. Me, I'm truthful right? I'm very truthful and I address things and this is how I heal because I live in the truth and I, and I talk things out. Like even to where I even, when I did that video about me getting with emotional unavailable men 
and people don't like to really say it, but the relationship with your parents really cultivates how you are in relationships with people when you get older, right? And I realized that I got into relationships with un uh, emotionally unavailable men because I had an emotionally unavailable father. And I was always looking for my father to come through, even to where three fucking weeks ago. You know what I'm saying? I was waiting for my father to come through and be a father and support me and save the day. And the nigga didn't. I had to come to realization, why is you waiting for him to do something that he's never going to fucking do? You know what I'm saying? He's never going to be that person that you need him to be. And basically, God spoke to me and said, you had a grandfather. You had uncles. You had your mama boyfriend. You have a lot of, and you got me. You know what I'm saying? So that divine masculine energy that I was searching for my father, I had it. But I was too busy hoping that my father would give it to me that I missed the fact that I already had got it. And I already, you know, had experienced it. I already had it. So here I am searching for something that I already had, you know. And I really had to really sit down with myself and be like, you got to get over that shit. You know what I'm saying? He's never going to be what you want him to be. Stop trying to make him be what you want him to be. And now his name being drugged through the mud on national fucking TV. And he not even stepping up and really even doing what he's supposed to for the sake of your, you know what I'm saying? Your feelings, your, your son feelings. You know what I'm saying? So I really had to really just like really take a step back and let me have a drink on that because, whew. I really had to take a step back and realize who this man really was, you know, and I do think that, you know, like I said before, black fam or just families, period, but I know black families, they do shit or they have issues and you ain't supposed to address it. You supposed to just act like it ain't happen, you know, be quiet, act like everything is chummy chummy while they do what they supposed to do. You know, I, I I can't start over, boo. This is, you have to watch it on my page. Ain't no way in hell I can start over from the beginning. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm going to have it on my page. But, um, you know, I feel like black families, they just literally like, they, they just want you to go through trauma and then never talk about it. Me, I'm very truthful, you know, and I don't say things to try to hurt people's feelings. If the truth hurts your feelings, then the truth hurts your motherfucking feelings. You know what I'm saying? So, like, at the end of the day, you know, I do feel like, you know, um, this, this, me addressing this is something that, and, and let me tell you something, my friends that know me have been telling me to address this for a long time. Not for the sake of clout chasing, because I'm not clout chasing. I can't clout chase my own life. You know what I'm saying? You can't, you can't, you can't get clout off your life. You could just tell your truth and maybe it'll help somebody or people just know who the fuck you, who you are and what you've been through. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of y'all don't know. A lot of y'all didn't know. Y'all just think I'm this vegan person and not knowing that, you know what I'm saying? I come from a family that, you know, father was an infamous drug dealer and not his name being thrilled, drugged through the fucking mud on television. And I have to really, you know, um, watch this play, play, play out. You know what I'm saying? But also, not only do I have to watch this play out, I have to deal with the trauma that I had going on. Like, me watching this shit, really, like, watching this play out, because I ain't watched the show, but I had to really deal with trauma. Like, when I seen the interview, and I seen um, Trap Queens, and she, Tonisa was talking about all this shit that her and my daddy did, and I thought to myself, well, if y'all had all this fucking money, if y'all had all of this greatness, and y'all had all these things... Why y'all didn't make sure that I was taken care of? Why, why y'all ain't send no money to my mama and make sure that they did what they supposed to? Granted, I'm 40 years old, and that's cool, but the little girl in me is like, while y'all was living y'all best life, y'all didn't make sure that his responsibilities was taken care of. My father did not say, go make sure my daughter college is taken care of. My father didn't say, let me, let me create a business so my children would be good my father didn't say you know what let me let me give my my baby mama which is my mama you know what i'm saying a, a couple racks so that she can make sure she got school clothes she can make sure she got christmas gifts she can make sure she got books she can make sure she go to the college tour 
You know what I'm saying? And I'm sitting here watching this shit on TV. Or, I mean, watching this shit on the internet or watching the replay or getting DMs from my friends about this shit. And I'm thinking to myself, this is entertainment for y'all, right? This is entertainment. Watching that BMF show, that's entertainment for y'all. Y'all want to see. Y'all want to know. It's the show. It's entertainment. This is juicy. This is a good show. But for me, that's my motherfucking life. You know what I'm saying? For me... When they, when they portray my father on this show, that's my father. You know what I'm saying? That's, uh, Terry's not my father. Terry's not my father, okay? Please, okay? For those who just coming on, Terry nor Meech is not my father. Harold, the guy who played Lala's husband, is my father. For the last time, that's the last time I'm going to say it, for those who late, okay? So, you know, um... At the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? While y'all watching this entertainment, while y'all watching Trap Queens, while y'all bigging up this person, while y'all so enthralled about this, this fictitious shit, that's literally connected to somebody's real life. And I have to really sit up and watch or, you know what I'm saying, see social media or see the blogs talk about this shit and... I really say to myself, like, well, damn, all this was happening and these adults, you know what I'm saying? Because these are adults. They were adults. I'm an adult now, right? But I couldn't imagine me being a mother and if I got 50 cent and my son need 49 cent for him to do something, here you go. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I'm not going to budge. Like, I did a lot to make sure that my son, and that's going to be a whole other story time of all the things that I had to go through and all the things I had to do to make sure that my son had a roof over his head. You know what I'm saying? Had to make sure that he had, you know, the things that he needed to provide. And his daddy did not provide. You know what I'm saying? So I could imagine how my mama felt watching this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, watching this shit and seeing how, you know what I'm saying, her baby daddy is portrayed as this rich guy and his him and his wife living this luxurious life and doing all this and thinking, well, damn, y'all didn't do shit for, 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 the, for the first. You know what I'm saying? Even to where on the show, when they did the scene to where um he put he put Lala out in the in, in, in the in the street in the rain with the kids, the two kids, the little light skinned kids, that's me and my brother. To be honest, because he only got two kids that they probably know about. And both of us light skin, both of us like our father. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't see it, but once again, like I said, my son told me about this. You know, so y'all watching this stuff, and I'm really sitting up here looking at how they really portray my father, but also the fact that, you know, his life is now a hit the the, the his life is a hit television show. And the truth is not is 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 like okay, somebody just asked, did he really shoot his mama? No, he didn't. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm saying. Y'all watching this and y'all thinking, oh, this how BMF was? It ain't true. Half of, I mean, okay, they sold drugs, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 his wife got with Terry, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But even still, her name, they ain't use her name. The, 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 the character of Markeisha is a real person, but they ain't even use her fucking name. You know what I'm saying? And somebody asked, how does my brother feel about, you know what I'm saying? Um, how did my brother feel about the, how they portrayed my father in this? I'm trying to figure out how they get the details about how my father was abusive. I'm trying to figure out how they got these details. Talk about my father was a snitch. I'm trying to figure out how they got these details, even down to the gator boots and shit, because that's what my father known for. Who gave these details? Now, I know that this second season... My brother has nothing to do with. And he's actually going through whatever he's going. And I ain't going to talk about that because that's not my business to talk. But I know that he took the idea to them. Now, how they pushed it to the limits. Because now that they got access to Terry and Meech. What they need her for. What they need him for. They got, they got who they need. And they can tell the story. Not however they want to tell the story to benefit them. You know what I'm saying? And... Like you said, at the beginning of the show, it says it's dramatized. It is dramatized, you know. But in the same token, it's still linked to real events and real people's lives. 
You know what I'm saying? Another drink. It's still linked to real people and real events, you know. And so, you know, I've talked about this a couple times. Um, like I said, I did a YouTube about it and I've addressed it and everybody keep getting it fucked up. Talk about who your daddy, who your dad, who your daddy, who your dad, girl. Don't mind. You know what I'm saying? And I just said, let me just come in here and do a story time and really tell y'all who my father was and what's my perception of who he is. Real shit. No cap. Y'all know I don't be sitting up here fronting and fronting and, 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 and trying to save face for nobody because I don't give a fuck. I'm, I'm literally straight up and down like my mama said you are your father's child when it comes to certain things my father don't give a fuck and neither do i okay i don't you know i just was just like you know when i seen um her doing the biopic i made the little video and was just like you know you doing a biopic based on my father putting you on now was she selling drugs with my father y'all see my face and that, that come from him. It don't come from me. Did she cheat on my father with Terry? That come from him. Not from me. Because I don't know. Because I was a kid. You know what I'm saying? I could just tell you what they told me as an adult what really happened. And I'm not. And I was a kid. So I wasn't trying to, you know, um, try to put that out. So somebody said you mentioned you and your brother were the ones who got put on in the rain. Did your father and wife take you in? No, she didn't take me in. No, absolutely fucking not. Uh, 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 no. Only time I seen her, three times, okay? The first time um, when, my, when I turned 16 and my father, I told my, I told my father I want a car. And had I known all that money they had, they should have been buying me a fucking Benz. They gave me $1,800 to get a car. I couldn't get nothing from the loss. I couldn't get nothing from the... Um, the the car lot so <clears throat> so my auntie rest in peace sold me a motherfucking car a lancer with a fucked up transmission and i was doing 30 miles per hour on a 45 mile per hour street my mama made her give me my money back and i took that money and went and bought me some clothes the second time when my mama got married she came to my mama's wedding and the third time was when my son was born she brought me a hundred dollars to the hospital so, no, we didn't have a relationship like that. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't a, this is my husband's daughter or, you know, this is my son's sister. It wasn't that. We don't, we don't really have a relationship. You know what I'm saying? We probably communicated more, um, you know, after she got out of jail. And that's because I set up interviews and I was living in California and I was trying to have a relationship with my brother and my brother was living with her. So, you know, our relationship was based on the fact that me having a relationship with my brother, which is, you know, pretty strange because we 10 years apart and our, you know, my daddy then made sure that we had a close relationship, but we didn't really have, we don't really have a relationship. I have helped her in her career, you know, um, but you know, like, yeah, he said, so Terry taking her and her kids to the hotel was made up as far as the kids being involved. Well, you, yeah, I don't know if he did or not. You know what I'm saying? Like, but, you know, he may have done it with her and her other kids, but not for me. You know what I'm saying? And realistically, I think it's probably all made up. I mean, the show is dramatized. You know what I'm saying? So, but I know that they did have a relationship when my father went to prison, but that's, that's what my father told me. You know what I'm saying? My father told me that um, she cheated on him with, with Terry, you know? And some other details that I'm not going to mention, but it was like, you know what I'm saying, stuff that he left that was no longer available. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to mention that because I don't know, you know, that kind of shit. I can't, I can't really get into the full details of that online. That's something I could probably tell my homegirls while we drinking and talking shit, but I can't share it with y'all because, you know, we're not about to do that, you know? Um, so, hmm. that feels like I'm looking crazy. It says, since, what's the biggest growth you've seen in yourself since the release of the show? Um, since the release of the show, it made me really, really think about, 
Like I like I feel like in my mind, I glamorize my father in my head. You know what I'm saying? Um, I glamorized our relationship and I glamorized who he was, you know, and um just seeing like I mean, because obviously, you know, he probably really did, you know, beat his wife and all that kind of shit. But it really made me think about who he was as a person. Um, and made me realize that he has been emotionally unavailable and that, you know, it just I just I just feel like it just made me come to the realization that, you know, though his life was big enough to be glamorized on television, um, it's really fucked up that, you know, he didn't set up things to make sure that the generations after him was sufficient. Like my granddaddy, my granddaddy bought houses, you know what I'm saying? My granddaddy got land, you know what I'm saying? So when my granddaddy passed... He got houses for his kids to live in if they want to live there. You know, my grandfather made sure that he created a legacy that even really affects me and my son to this day. My father, honey child. So it really just made me really think about, you know, like, it really just made me think about the fact that, okay, so my dad is has a character on this hit TV show, but people don't even realize that he wasn't really like, you know, like there's a, a, a child behind this that really all this money and all this glamour glamorization, there's a child out here that was made that was not sufficiently, you know what I'm saying, like loved. To be honest, it made me realize that I wasn't loved by him as a as a as an adult and my father was emotionally unavailable. Like I said before in the lab, and it made me realize that I was dating unemo un, un, un emotionally unavailable men because I had a father that was emotionally unavailable, you know, and it made me really think about the fact that, you know, my father having, my father having a character on a hit TV show, like, well, damn, so your, so your family really lit out here, huh? You know what I'm saying? They really, they really was doing some things that made people really give a fuck about, you know, but it, it didn't make me feel good because it wasn't like, they being known for changing the world in a positive manner. None of that is positive. I hope y'all understand that. You know what I'm saying? Being a drug dealer is cool, but y'all also realize that on the other side of that, there's somebody who was smoking crack, who died. You know what I'm saying? So granted, my father was this, you know, big drug dealer, but what about people who parents, I have friends that have parents that were on crack, that were on drugs. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, he was this drug dealer. But what about the people that was strung out on crack from what he was doing? You had this talent to become a millionaire. You had this entrepreneur mindset to, you had this hustler in you and you used it for something that was detrimental to the community, to the black community. Y'all, you know what I'm saying? Do y'all even realize that? Like, okay, we love these drug dealer movies. You know what I'm saying? We love this this drug dealer life. We love to see what BMF did. But do y'all realize that they were influential in the demise of so many black families? Of so many mothers and fathers that could not be a good mother and father because they were strung out on the drugs they were putting in the community. So it's all fun and dandy and to see, yeah, you know what I'm saying? She lit. She was this or he this and he that. But what about the people who were on the other side that was that was stealing from their mamas and their daddies and you know what I'm saying, not taking care of their kids and selling their bodies and prostituting and getting AIDS because they out here selling selling their body so that they can go get some crack. It's a flip side to that. And it made me think about the flip side too. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 not it's not just oh okay, they lit, they were selling drugs, they big like they this, they that. But it's also people that was taking drugs. It's people that's dead because of this. It's people that strung out because of this. It's kids, not like me, but it's other kids that had to deal with the fact that not because their parents was making all this money and not taking care of them because the fact that their parents was using all these drugs, that the money that they was making, they was putting in the drugs. You know what I'm saying? 
So, like, there's a flip side to that as well. And that's what made me think about, too, like, how really of a positive, influential influence is he if he was actually responsible for the demise of people because they got strung out, because they OD, because they got because they got AIDS, because they got hepatitis, because they got, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, they 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 got, you know what I'm saying, negative things happen to them because they're taking these drugs. You know what I'm saying? So like that's that's really what it is. Okay, so let's go to some more comments. Um let's see. Okay. Hold on, let's see. Okay. Oh, it's, okay, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I'm gonna go to the comments. Damn, that's why they were rolling their money and did you like that, but it made you who you are. Yeah, I mean, because I had a strong ass mama. Don't get it twisted. What's the biggest book I addressed that? This is Claire Mother Show. I addressed that. I always think about you when I watch BMF. Aw. Uh, y'all don't drop me. Who's your father? Boom. He he was La La Husband. The show is the show, but y'all, but let's, dis, but let's discuss you. I've been following you, and I thought about you already, and I thought you were already perfect, but I've seen growth from you since the show, which is crazy how you keep elevating. Thank you, baby. Just clarifying the, the dramatization and facts. Thank you, baby. Thank y'all for answering the people that just got into. I love you here. Thank you, boo. Men who don't take care of their children will never live a good life. No, the fuck they don't. Is your father alive? Yes, he's alive. And he's he just got out of prison this last year. Last year. He had a run and that was it. <laughs> Do you speak to your father today? Um, Like I said before, I actually talked to my father like three weeks ago when they came out with that last episode when they called him a snitch and I was trying to help him. And then I told him I needed some help financially on some things. And he asked me, was I joking? And I said, you know what? I don't got motherfucking time. Canceled, canceled, canceled. And I'm, I'm really that I don't give a fuck type person. I got a mama who loved me. My mama got a husband who loved her. I got a son who loved me. He got a girlfriend who loved me. I'm good when it comes to family. Um, I always think about that. We glorify drug dealers, but the negative impact on the community is destructive. Yeah, people don't really think about that. Yeah, I wish these shows would keep it real. They can't keep it real because if they keep it real, people won't watch it. How are you protecting your energy through the negativity of everyone's words or personal beliefs? You know, I'm 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 a strong believer in the subtle art of not giving a fuck. You know what I'm saying? I meditate, I do things to, you know, keep my vibrational frequency high. And even talking and doing stuff like this helps me heal. And I don't take in negative energy. You know what I'm saying? And thank you for those who've been buying my badges. Buying me badges. My father did. And I don't feel like y'all hold people accountable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's time we hold people accountable. It's all cool to be like, oh, drug dealer, drug dealer, oh, this. But what about the drug user, drug user? You know what I'm saying? Thank you for taking the time to share your story. You're welcome, baby. Thank you for the badge, boo. You know, so I really wanted to just come in here and just really tell y'all, this is part one. Part two going to be coming because it's going to get better. Okay? We really going to get into it. Uh, some stuff, you know what I'm saying? But I can't just give y'all all of the tea in one live. But I really had to address it because... All y'all was asking me a lot of questions about that video. And I never really, like, I did a, a YouTube about why I don't watch the show or whatever. But I realized I got a lot of new followers. And when I, when I, when I, when I addressed it, the first time, my father's character wasn't on um, the show. You know, so, um, you know, so now that he's on the show... I had did that before when the when the first season came out and I just said I ain't watching it. Now that he had a character on the show and they portrayed it and now, you know, his ex wife is doing a biopic and, you know, she did the B T Trap Queens and shit. It's like, okay, well let me finally address this shit because this is my life. You know what I'm saying? And y'all know I'm transparent and y'all know I don't give a fuck. And y'all know I be telling y'all, I always tell y'all bits and pieces about my life. You know what I'm saying? And this is no different. And maybe my family don't understand that because those who follow me, y'all know that I'm very transparent about different things about my life, right? Everything I'm transparent about. I might not give y'all everything at once, 
because I have like I have it scripted out and how I will reveal certain information based on you know what I'm saying when God tells me it's time for me to release that information but y'all know I'm very transparent and I'm always telling y'all about things I've been through I'm always telling y'all about my life and you know who I am as a person just so y'all can kind of understand who I am and y'all can understand my my mission and my goals and why I do the things I do or so just so y'all can know who I am because I'm not one of these influencers that try to have my life and try to act like oh it's just hi guys I'm the vegan foodie no I'm a real ass bitch give a fuck about a nigga type chick you know and so and I know that the more that I'm transparent about my life people tell me I'm helping them heal just with the conversations and me being transparent about who I am you know and that's my mission. And I do believe that, you know, God had me being in a certain position and going through certain things so that I can help people, you know. And even with me having this conversation, even about my father, I'm pretty sure that it's people that really haven't realized why they were in relationships because they had a emotionally unavailable father. And hopefully this conversation even helps them to understand why they were going through the things that they were going through. It just so happened that my emotionally unavailable father has a role on a star TV show. You know what I'm saying? That's just it. He just, he got a character on the show and he's this infamous drug dealer. So, but that don't, that don't mean that he, he's not, he still wasn't a person that was um, exempt from having a emotionally unavailable or a daughter who suffered from emotionally unavailable father. Um, see, my dad killed my mom. He's still locked up but doesn't want nothing to do with me. Always wonder how do you start to form that relationship with someone in jail or recently released. It's very hard. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I would talk to my father, but my father would say whole shit to me, and I would cut his ass off because he'd he be saying a lot of whole shit. And y'all know how my mouth is, so imagine how a drug dealer father who really ain't do shit for you, how his mouth is. You know, and I'd be cutting him off. I'd be like, I don't got time. You know what I'm saying? I really don't have time and I can't imagine like I would never want to imagine or even be in that situation where my father, you know, like killed my mama. Like, nigga, I'm never talking to you. The fuck? You can burn in that bitch. You killed my mama, nigga. You're a murderer. The fuck? I want a relationship with you for what? What you gonna tell me? Sorry? I ain't mean to do it. Nigga, get the fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm nice for, for being cool with, with, with having a relationship with my father. He hit my mama. And I don't fuck with niggas that be chicks. You know what I'm saying? It just so happened that mine happened to be my daddy. And I tried to be cool, but then I realized this nigga really ain't shit. He might not hit me um, physically, but the nigga hit me financially, emotionally, and uh, spiritually. You know? If 50 had a single on where were, on where... If 50 had a sequel on where everyone stands now, would you take an offer? I mean, yeah, shit. It's going to bring me some money. But it it wouldn't be to be that. I would use that platform so I go do my own shit. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm still the vegan foodie, high vibrational, holistic life. I don't want to get caught up in that toxic. Because that's low vibrational and toxic. You know what I'm saying? So I wouldn't be on there to be like, yeah, y'all, I'm just going to keep being a drug dealer's daughter. No, nah, nigga. You come on my page, you're going to be like, oh, no, nah, she ain't even talking about that shit. She talk about vegan food and meditation and, and, and living their best life, you know? So, um, thank you for loving me. I love you, too. I grew up around addicts and dealers. I've seen both sides. Exactly. Are the wife and your father still together? No. He, she, she cheated on him with uh, Terry. Actually, when Terry got out, they was together for a little bit. Yeah, my dad was in that life as well. We never had a conversation about anything, but I'm open to it because I want to understand what actually happened between them. Well, hey, that's a conversation that, you know, I would say you need to really... <sighs> I can't even give you advice on that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't, I can't even really be like really tell you like oh you should do this and do that because i can't even imagine having a conversation with somebody that did something like that to my mama you know i'm being cool being being it's a thin line talking to my daddy who did something to my mama you know what i'm saying so kudos to you for really wanting to have i mean but you got to have peace and you got to have closure you know what i'm saying and hopefully he's willing to be honest with you and not be beat around the bush you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people want to beat around the bush and don't want to be held accountable. And that's another thing, too. I feel like 
with all of this, my father is not being accountable. You know what I'm saying? He want to be mad. Oh, they got me on the show doing this. They got me on BET on the interview saying this. These people saying my name, but you need to be accountable. 360. You know what I'm saying? It goes, it goes further than just, you know, being a drug dealer. You need to be accountable because you have children out here that you really didn't, you know what I'm saying, be accountable for. To be honest, oh, trust me, you helped plenty with this live. Thank you so much. You're welcome, baby. So what are the questions y'all got? Because I'm answering questions. You know what I'm saying? I'm answering questions. And don't ask me who my father is. Don't ask me no motherfucking more. Okay? I'm I'm not answering no more questions. If I if y'all in the comments, if y'all see somebody in the comments new asking who my father is, answer for their ass. Or tell them ketchup mustard. Cause don't nobody got time to be sitting up answering the same fucking question over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. That's why I'm doing this live, you know. And like I said, people been asking me to do this my friends been asking me to do this for a long ass time you know and it's not to catch clout you know what i'm saying from who he is it's not to create a buzz about myself because i'm already lit you know what i'm saying i'm already like without any of this you know what i'm saying i'm 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 lit as fuck without all of this to be honest this is this is low vibrational, but it's still my life. And you know what I'm saying? And I have to be transparent about my life. And as things come up, I'm transparent about it. Did you have another father figure in your life? I did. My father figure was my mom's ex-boyfriend, Jeff. And when I tell y'all, hey, I when I say I loved that man. You know, I don't know if he's alive or not because we ain't talked to him in a minute. I tried to reach out to him, see, I know he got sick, but he was a very good figure in my life. You know, he was a very, very, very good figure in my life. And he really showed me how a man is supposed to treat a lady. And, you know, actually he was in radio. Um, he was an account executive for a big radio station and um in detroit so i feel like even my career in radio and just my career in the industry was kind of like encouraged by what i seen him doing in his lifestyle growing up you know so and he um you know he was lit shit he was very lit you know so like we was going to events we was eating good he was buying me juice in a glass box, taking me out of town to go shopping. Like, he was very lit. And then I had uncles who did for me, you know, who loved me, who took me Disney World, buying me toys and, you know, showing me life as it should be, you know. And then also my grandfather was the littest of the littest of the littest fathers when it comes to fathers. He was the grand pooper, even though he was stern. My grandfather was the shit, okay? So, I have grown up with, with father figures, you know? Um, let's see. Yeah, you need to do more. This is only an introduction. Yeah, I'm doing more. Wait, there's a show. Somebody catch me up. Yeah, you're going to have to rewatch this, honey. You are already the vegan foodie, period. You make me want to move out the country so bad. Ah, Her father's Harold Boone from BMF, and she's going to talk about it in a three-part series. <laughs> You got to say it. It's like, oh, I am. She makes me want to move out the country every day from her TikTok. I love y'all. You know what I'm saying? Because even outside of all this bullshit I got going on, we still out here traveling, drinking good, living good, eating good. You know what I'm saying? And make sure y'all come to Greece and party with me because we're going to turn the fuck up. If y'all want to really see what it's like to be with me, come to Greece because we're going to be drinking. I don't know if we're going to be smoking. I don't know. But we're going to be drinking. And we're going to be turned up in Greece. So if y'all trying to come hang with me, come out to Greece with me. That's my little plug. It's all good. You are an amazing woman. I raised a fearless person. Thank you, my... my you Okay, so I... 
I ain't supposed to be cussing because my mama on here. But you know what I'm saying? Ma, you on my last, so you know I pop my shit. But let me tell y'all something. That lady right there, my mama raised me and she used to always say, do not be a follower, be a leader. Okay? She, despite everything, oh yeah, it's whiskey. Because <laughs> I had to drink for this live, honey. But let me tell you something. My mother, despite the fact that my father was who he was. Let me tell y'all about my mama, okay? My mother was an entrepreneur that had one of the most littest hair and nail shops in Detroit, okay? When, when, from all my life, my hair and my nails have been laid. She never missed a beat, okay? She made sure that I was always taken care of. She the one taught me, listen, you don't work for nobody. You go out here and you have your business. You know, she encouraged me to be who I am. She never sugarcoated anything. She encouraged me everything that I did. She had me in dance class. She had me in the choir. She had me doing writing competitions. You know what I'm saying? I was doing um, science fairs, creative writing. You know what I'm saying? She really, um, she really helped cultivate my talent as the person who I am. Like, she would tell me, write it out. So, that's why I write books so flawlessly. That's why I can put out a book effortlessly because my mama encouraged that you know and, and she had me working at her nail shop since i was 11 you know what i'm saying and and i and i could do nails and i could do hair and i could do lashes and you know she had me modeling the magazines you know being in hair magazines being in fashion shows you know in hair shows had me doing promo you know would, would take me pull me out of school and take me out of town and go i've been to the mardi gras 16 you know what i'm saying like my mama let me travel. She let me do things that I wanted to do and never held me back, despite the fact that my, my daddy was on some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? And made sure I always look good. She would be like, if if somebody did my hair and she ain't like it, she like, wash that shit out and redo her hair. My baby ain't going out here looking like this. You know, so despite the fact that my father had, had what he had and didn't, you know, pour into me my mama because i'm the only child okay my mama poured into me like you know what i'm saying she poured into me and overflowed in me you know what i'm saying and encouraged me to be this person encouraged me to speak my truth you know she co-signed my bullshit you know what i'm saying she woke me to be the greatest version of myself because greater words come after you and me being a great me is is shows you you know what i'm saying is a a representation of who she was even i'm vegan because my mama to be honest i'm holistic because my mama my mama raised me this way you know what i'm saying when she when we was younger she was she went vegan in the 90s when niggas was didn't didn't know nothing about this vegan life people was talking crash crash trash shit about my mama being a vegan you know what i'm saying and she kept with it back back when there wasn't no um beyond meat impossible burger when it wasn't 50,000 motherfucking vegans on Instagram, you know? So, like, my mama is the reason that I am who I am. She's the reason why I am the vegan foodie. She's the reason why I am holistic. When I turned 18 and I and I and I moved out, you know what I'm saying? My mama gave me a um a herb book of different herbs so that I could take care of myself. You know, she encouraged me in every aspect and never judged me for anything that I chose to do. She'd be like, I'm with it. You with you with the shits, I'm with the shits. You know what I'm saying? So despite the fact that my father was who he was, my mama showed me, niggas supposed to take care of you. Niggas supposed to take you out on dates. She showed me how to date. She showed me how to put on my black sexy dress and get a nigga to do anything that I needed him. Because my mama was one of them bad big booty chicks. She wasn't one of them big old burly. Uh, 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 sorry, my mom was a baddie. Okay, still a baddie. But she was uh, growing up, my mama was a baddie. Okay, hair none, nails done, big booty, big titty, dress flat type chick. You know what I'm saying? New car riding chick. You know what I'm saying? What a nigga gonna do for me? Oh, you ain't doing nothing for me and my baby? Oh, you got to go type chick. You know what I'm saying? So, regardless of the fact that my father didn't do what he was supposed to do. My mama came through. And that's why I am the way I am. That's why I'm saucy. And a lot of people in my family don't even like it. You know what I'm saying? That I'm so saucy. But it's like, how you gonna be mad at me for being the best version of me? You know? 
and getting better. I'm working on getting better and better and better. So, shout out to my mama. Okay? Because I feel like, you know, I could talk crazy about my daddy, but it's it's two sides to every story. Okay? You got the daddy who didn't do, and you got the mama who came through. Okay? She is a bomb. I found her on TikTok at the beginning of the pandemic. Oh, boo. I love that your mom didn't let your dad dropping the ball affect your life and growing up the right way. Thank you. Yes, and plus how she breaks everything down. Like what? The photo and all the things. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so you know. What's up, son? You missed the whole live. I was calling you to tell you the tea. And you ain't asked my son on here too. Now I got my mama and my son. I had a whole conversation about your granddaddy, Jay. <laughs> you missed it. The whole breakdown. But this is part one, part two coming. Yes, the plow is in the house. You know what I'm saying? That's my team right there. If y'all want to know who motivates me to be the vegan foodie, it's my mom and my son. They motivate me to be the best version of me that y'all see. And they be telling me like, do you realize how you this? And do you, you this, you that? It's my, my mom and my son. That's my family. You know, forget aunties, uncles, cousins. You know, daddy, my daddy said, I don't even fuck with them. Said, I'm going to keep it 100 with y'all. Since I'm being transparent, I don't even fuck with them. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, so, uh, you say, I got the tea. Carlos called us for a booking. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So, but we're going to have to discuss the tea afterwards. You know what I'm saying? We're going to have to, we're going to have to do a, a, a mama and son rundown. You know, actually the, the tea inspired this live. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? They thought they thought they could shut me. They can't shut me. You know what I'm saying? They forgot I'm the vegan foodie, baby. I'm going to tell my story. I'm going to be transparent and help somebody along the process. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy when your family don't even realize. I think, I think my family don't even realize, like, and not trying to be facetious or nothing. But I, I think my family forgot that I'm lit in these motherfucking streets and I've been lit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> talk about right. Talk about Harold Stinson. Who the hell is Harold Stinson? Harold Mills. I just told him now. I said Google Harold Mills for all those keep asking who my daddy. You know, go Google Harold Mills BMF. Y'all want to see who the fuck my daddy is? That's go go find him. And when you find him, then you can put the pieces to the story and stop asking me is Meech. And is Terry my daddy? Somebody even asked, was I was I in a relationship with them? Like, what is you reading? Do motherfuckers read? I put everything on the on on the video and people still ask dumbass questions. Or Google. People a lot of people ask questions that could be Googleable. Start learn to Google, y'all. Learn to fucking Google. And on that, I'm gonna pour me another drink. So what questions y'all got for me? Renee tries to put me on a three-way. Because you know we're going to talk hella shit. <laughs> you know? You know, look, me and my son, our our conversations are gossip me on another level. And me and my mama, our conversations, look, because we don't gossip, listen. And the crazy part is, our lives, I had a friend I had to drop because she wanted to call me and gossip about my family. Because that's, lit to her like uh, yeah Lala is not my mama that's not my mama mm -mm. my mama don't want no part of that fucking show she is unbothered and peaceful she living her best life with her husband taking care of her being a housewife that's what my mama doing she living her best life she ain't trying to run around and be uh, a drug dealer's wife she a drug dealer's baby mama and want to cuss him out every day for the lack of accountability. For real. And when is being a drug dealer notable and lit? That's a toxic occupation, to be honest. That's one of the most toxic occupations in the world. Being a drug dealer, a, ph a pharmacist and a drug dealer. They both deteriorating people's bodies. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
it's so sad to me that people want to glorify being being affiliated with drug dealing. That's crazy to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, niggas don't want to be... Like, my mission is to be notable and famous for helping people heal and be the best version of themselves. Not because I'm tied to some loser-ass fucking nigga who was out here deteriorating the community with his occupation of shoving drugs down people's throats for for financial gain and didn't even take care of his fucking kids with it. That's not lit. I'm sorry to tell y'all. If y'all thought that shit was lit, if y'all thought that show was lit, matter of fact, I don't even want to watch Power. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't care about no damn drug dealer. For real. I wouldn't... I remember I was dating this one dude, and he said he wanted to be the biggest drug dealer. You know? Like, what? Can't be on no future around a drug dealer. It's sad. It's sad that everyone want to be the wife of a drug dealer until they get locked up. Right. People was quick to hop on the BMF train. Yeah. Black motherfuckers faking it. Man, let me tell you how many niggas want to be here, yeah, because I'm linked to BMF. So you link to a criminal organization that was um, hands-on in the destruction of your own community. The next time a nigga tell you, or the next time a nigga tell me, yeah, because I'm linked to BMF, I'm BMF. I'm going to be like, so you are proud to be linked to a criminal organization that aided in the demise and the destruction of the black community. You know? Like, don't that sound crazy as fuck? You're right. That's why my dad wanted no part of his cousin Frank. Yeah, like, like seriously, that's that's a horrible thing, y'all. Do y'all realize that's a horrible thing? And we glorifying this is entertainment. People entertain by a television show that aided in the demise and the destruction of the black community. That's not a good thing. Only reason my son watches is because. His granddaddy is is a character is portrayed. That's the only reason. Trust me, he wouldn't be watching that shit because he want to see, because he entertain. You know what I'm saying? But it's like that shouldn't even be entertainment. People need to stop glorifying the drug dealer character. It's 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 not positive. It doesn't perpetuate high vibrational frequency in our community and to be honest i'm very embarrassed that my father is actually influential in the destruction of the black community that i grew up in i grew up in this community that he single-handedly helped to destroy and he didn't even give my mama money to get me out of the fucking community he moved his 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 wife and his kids his wife and his and her kids you know what I'm saying? Out of the community where he was selling drugs and left me in that bitch. It just so happened that I had a strong black mama that I didn't get caught up in that shit. I ain't even, I, I don't even, I don't even, even fancy. I've never done coke. You know what I'm saying? I've never thought about doing crack. I've never thought about taking any narcotics. I smoke weed, yeah. I do some shrooms, yeah. But that helps to stimulate my mind so I can be greater and connected to the spiritual world. But it's like, you know what I'm saying? I ain't I ain't I ain't with that shit. You know what I'm saying? They glorify into the affects them and their family, then the shame, the same people they was praising. It's crazy they don't see how it affects our community until it affects them personally. Cause they selfish as fuck. I believe for my father to be a drug dealer, he's a selfish motherfucker. I'm going to just keep it funky. And y'all know I don't give a fuck when I talk shit. When I start talking my shit, y'all know I don't give a fuck. In order to be a drug dealer out here selling crack, cocaine, heroin, meth, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's a selfish person. He is saying, we applaud a young man reacting his father's Well, right. And y'all up here, love me, shit, love me, love me. Y'all applauding a man who's reenacting his father's 
negative character. What? Seriously? Y'all like little Meech, little Meech, little Meech. And I don't know the little boy. I don't know nothing about the little boy. But I feel like... I feel like he probably feel like he on top of the world because he's playing his father's character on this hit show. But realistically, do y'all understand the frequency and the energy about this? You know what I'm saying? He's reenacting his father's role who was a drug dealer who aided in the destruction of the community. So therefore, he is still perpetuating that same energy of um glorifying the destruction of the black community come on somebody let's speak it let's speak it though let's be truthful you know what i'm saying i mean 50 gonna get his money but at the same token i think he just as bad as tyler perry you know what i'm saying i'm real shit because that show does not bring like a positive image into the community that show does not um, bring unity in that community. That show does not empower people. It doesn't. It glorifies the destruction of the black community. It glorifies the trauma in the black community. The same thing that Tyler Perry be doing with these motherfucking movies. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. That's like Trina's daughter acting like a slut. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got to be careful what we what we find entertainment. What we find entertainment, you know? That's not positive. It's not positive. And we need to really take a step back and realize what we're allowing our community to consider entertainment. It's not entertainment. That show is about the destruction of the black community. That show is about well, my father's character is about a man who was abusive, emotionally unavailable, who did not really take accountability for being a positive role model for the generations to follow after him. Like I said, my father still talk about drinking. Last time I talked to him, he was talking about drinking um, Kevin Hart's tequila and buying red bottoms and about to buy a car. Nigga, you 60. Why you ain't talking to me about spirituality? Why you not talking to me about, you know, generational wealth? Why you not talking to me about being, you know what I'm saying? How I could be in my soft girl era and be adored as a beautiful goddess that I am. You know, like, right. Meanwhile, the Hebrew, right. Like my son, baby, you better speak it. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all... <laughs> Y'all ain't met my son yet, but one day I'm gonna let my son come on here and he will, he will, he will kick game to your ass because he is a mini me, but he's a big me, you know? Like, you know, like Hebrews, the, Hebrews, the Negroes, Hebrews, the Negroes is banned, but BMF is, is, is the number one talked about television show. Make it make sense. And we have to hold ourselves accountable. It's, it's not just, you know, the producers and the the, net, the networks. They're going to throw it out there. And if we biting on it and if we watching and we entertaining and we glorify and we think this shit cool, we just as bad as as the people that's doing it, to be honest. You know what I'm saying? We just as bad as them. So we got to hold ourselves accountable for the things that we entertain ourselves. I'm not watching that shit because I don't want to be entertained with a toxic trauma field show. You know? Like I said, my son watched it just to see what was really going on. Because we, because as as a family, one of us got to see what they really talk about when it come to us. But we ain't watching to be like, oh, let's watch and see what Terry, I'm so geek. Terry and me, oh, 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 Tonisa, oh, Harold, that's so lit. Look at us. That's embarrassing as fuck. You know how embarrassing it is for somebody to call your father an abusive rat on fucking TV? You know how embarrassing it is to see your stepmama talk about all this wealth and, and, and me and my brother college wasn't paid for? You know how embarrassing that shit is? Seriously? That shit is embarrassing. As a as a black woman, that's embarrassing. And I'm embarrassed for them. To be honest, I'm embarrassed for them. 
you know. And and, and this new show that's coming out. What? How many? How many ways we gonna talk about BMF? How many ways is we gonna talk about being a drug dealer's girlfriend? How many ways is we gonna discuss this sad a uh, a uh, a uh, a uh, uh, topic? When are we gonna glorify women that own their divine feminine energy? When are we gonna glorify? Uh, 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 shows or what, or, 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 or entertainment that allows a person to embrace their spirituality. When are we going to, you know, um, have entertainment that allows us to understand that our relationship with God is more important than trying to clout, or clout chase or cat. You know what I'm saying? When are we going to be in a position to where? We don't find it entertaining to see someone, you know, destruct, being destructive in our black community and our black families. And we want to see people doing things that's uplifting us and making us feel empowered. That's why I don't watch them fucking shows. That's why I don't watch Atlanta Housewives. That's why I don't watch Love and Hip Hop. That's why I don't watch none of that shit. Because none of that shit makes me feel empowered. You know, the last thing I seen that made me feel empowered? The movie, um, I Am King. About the African women... The 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 uh the warriors the soldiers that made me feel empowered. Uh, Black Panther when I seen, you know what I'm saying black people, and Mexican people having this 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 epic power to where they was making the white people bow down and no disrespect to the white people in my lab but they was making the white people bow down. That's the kind of shit I want to see. I don't want to see a bunch of niggas being niggas for entertainment and and calling it. The, the hit show. That shit ain't hit. That shit weak. And anybody that think that shit is that's popping, you weak as fuck. Like this one lady, um, Baby J, she running around with Lil Meech. Yeah, BMX, this, this. Girl, that shit is toxic as fuck. And you, you so happy to be connected to a nigga that's on TV about a show that was... It's probably somebody in your family who smoked crack. You probably had an auntie that smoked crack, and it and it and it and it stressed your family. And you around this motherfucker, yeah, cause I'm hanging with Big Meech, looking stupid. You look stupid. You look you look you 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 look like the problem that's in the society. And you can tell I said it. I don't give a fuck what the fuck she gonna do. I ain't like her no way. Never liked her. Never liked her energy. And I see why. <laughs> that was a sidebar. For those who know, you caught that. Renee, did you catch that? You know? So, like, I'm over this shit, y'all. You know what I'm saying? I hope y'all enjoyed my part one. Part two coming soon, because baby got more. More. Baby got more. More. Baby got more. I got more shit to tell y'all. More tea. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to tell y'all the real behind I just got to figure out how I can say it without... You know what I'm saying? About being politically correct. But y'all know once I get going, y'all know I talk my shit. And y'all know I don't give a fuck about how nobody feel. You know that. You know that. You know? So. Right. That's the criminal comp. That's the victim complex. They suppress us so hard. Our idols and martyrs become criminals. Right. They make you think it's lit to be a drug dealer. That's why... That's what all these rappers talking about. They think they make you think, oh, you lit, you a criminal. That's just like chicks that be that be glorifying fucking scammers. Girl, if you don't get a nigga who who uh making money off his own divine talent, off his by by his spiritual gift, why are you over here trying to think you doing well because you fucking a scammer? That's low vibrational. You know, why you think you doing, like in my area was you fuck with drug dealers. And I, and I know I get it. Drug dealers have money, but what about them? What about them niggas who own them businesses? You know what I'm saying? Who was successful and being an entrepreneur. What about them? That's real lit. Not these sorry ass drug dealers who ain't taking care of their responsibilities. And I'm a child of one, you know? All right, y'all, I'm out of here. Hope y'all enjoy my live. Y'all got any questions for they before I go? Right, not every guy's an actor, a rapper. 
Some people real life, hard working, successful, profitable entrepreneurs. Okay. So y'all got any questions or comments before I get up out of here? I hope y'all did y'all enjoy this live. Did y'all enjoy it? See or no? See or no? You welcome, baby. Y'all know I had to kick it to you straight up with no chaser, raw with no Vaseline. I'm glad y'all enjoyed this live. For those who was late, it's going to be on my page. I'm about to get up out of here because it's 1 a.m. I need to get on chat GPT, do some work, and take my ass to bed. All right. Peace.